Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you all had a good week. Uh, not too bad for me. Pretty busy. But, uh, what do we got? We got um, November 24th, 25th today. Somewhere there. 26th? I don't know. Can't try to remember. I kind of lose track. Um, we are getting close to Christmas. I know a lot of you don't want to hear about that. And, you know, it's kind of a stressful time for people. But um, I enjoy it. I like getting together with the family and cooking, eating, drinking. You know, the usual stuff. I got my favorite right here. We'll just, out of the way. My favorite right here. Some of you guys like this. Some of you ladies like this. Eggnog, rum. Ooh, it just came out in stores. Just came out in stores last week. So I got myself one liter. I'm in Canada, so I got one liter. No, we got gallons? No, we don't have gallons here anymore. Just the liter. <clears throat> they got the bigger one. It's a two liter. You could probably get a four liter. I don't know, which is close to a gallon. Anyway. I, I love this stuff. Well, I love it for a month, right? Until Christmas is over, New Year's over, and then I'm done with it until maybe Easter again, they bring it out. But uh, it just came out, got myself some. If you like it, yeah. If you've never had it, try it. It's delicious. And uh, if you don't like it, well, don't have it again. Oh, boy, that is good. Okay. What do we got today? Maybe a shorter video today last week was about 30 minutes you know i kind of aim for 10 to 15 minutes and so we'll try to keep it there what do we got here that is a roll pin this looks like a pulley doesn't it it's a pulley with a shoulder on each side a flanged edge i guess you'd call it and if you can pick up on that there is a crown to the pulley well the crown um Let's not skip too far ahead. This is a pulley that goes on the crankshaft and the belt rides on the pulley. Pulley goes round and round, turns the belt, turns the fan, which we, we talked about last week. And um, this is the next piece of the puzzle in making that all work really smooth and not have belts jumping off and, you know, just making sure that all the whole cooling system is, is, uh, is taken care of. Um, I got, I don't know who makes these. I know where I got it. I got it from Snyder's. Um, I, it wasn't terribly expensive when you look at this. This is a billet piece of, of aluminum. Somebody, you know, I know that they can probably spin these out pretty quick, but somebody did some work in drawing this out and coming up with a really good design. So what they've got is your normal hole size, I believe. I'll have to measure. I don't know. Here, let's measure. Let me reach across here. If I can get my calipers to reach in there. You are... Oh boy, hold on a second. Let's clear that up. You are 1.15, which is what? One... I don't know. That's close to an inch and an eighth, right? Somewhere in there. 1.1... 1. 1, yeah, I'm going to just say 1 and an eighth, probably somewhere in there. I think it's a little bit bigger, but... Yeah, that's what I'm coming up with. One point, oh, sorry, 1.17. Well, whatever. You're pretty well close to an inch and an eighth there. It's probably a little bit different. But over an inch, that goes on the crankshaft. So what has normally happens, and I'll take you over the, to the truck in a second, is either the roll pin gets loose in the slot, or sorry, the hole that's cut in the crankshaft, or the crankshaft gets wore, or the pulley gets war and this baby just starts flopping and flopping and it's all over the place and like i say pretty soon the belt's flying off so what they've done originally they had this as one piece the i believe a probably a taper pin goes through locks the whole thing in and um that's it very simple so what they've done to fix that is they've made it i believe they probably made this to the normal diameter and then to account for wear they've slit the pulley and placed a grub screw hex head uh, yeah hex head grub screw right through so you can now clamp this down onto the crankshaft which takes up all that wear and then it also will uh, hold this pulley stop it from clocking basically on the crankshaft and another thing is this sits here right and you're your uh, hand crank 
engages on it when it's inside of here. Goes inside here. See? But for that to happen, that has to be in there. You can't just have the pulley mounted there. Of course, unless you don't want to have the hand crank. So tonight's episode is finishing up the cooling system and changing this pulley. Um, like I said, it has a crown. I kind of alluded to that earlier. It has a crown. The crown helps center the belt. Also, it helps keep the belt, you know, on the pulley are these two shoulders here, which the original pulley doesn't have. Um, I marked these just for the sake of uh, eliminating confusion in my own head. Um, these holes are taper cut. So smaller, sorry, larger here, smaller here. You can tell because, you know, I, I checked to see if this, maybe this roll pin was tapered. It is a really, really slightly tapered, but just on the ends. So anyway, it goes in and you get a nice start on it and then drive it in the rest of the way. So let's uh, head over to the truck. Enough gabbing. Let's head over to the truck. Remove that original pulley. Maybe tidy it up over there a bit and install our new pulley. Okay. So here we are. We're back. Um, what do we got? So we got... Grab something here. We got the pulley I was telling you guys about. There it is. What I did notice is someone's had their fingers in here. And I can tell that because that pin that runs through there is not a pin. It's a bolt because I can see some threads. Uh, where are they? Here. Here on the top side. Somebody's ran a bolt through and uh, just peened it over. So that bolt will not be tapered. So realistically, the only thing that's holding that in there is this peen. So let's take a chisel. You could do it a few ways. You could use a grinder. Grinder, you could use a saw. We'll just try to stay out of your way. You can see what I'm doing here. We'll just clear this off and drive it through. Okay. I wasn't liking banging on that, to be honest with you. So we got ourselves a slitting disc. We're just going to clear that right off there. Watch your ears. Okay, a lot faster and a lot less, uh, all this banging on the crank and, uh, and stuff like that, huh? So let's see if we can knock that pin through. There is a hole. Let me just move you guys around the other side. It's all right. There is a hole, a drain hole, down below in the pan. So that's where that pin should go. Let's see if we can get some luck. I just realized after kind of whacking away at that, pin again it's not a pin it's a bolt but it may be a hardened bolt so no use causing trouble see that that's out again obviously not tapered because that is just falling out let's have a look what we got uh-huh the suspect bolt you know what i was hoping to see there's a lot more wear in that bolt so you know what I'm probably going to see is uh, a lot of wallowing, a lot of um, um, ovaling in that hole through the crank. Should we pull this guy off? Let's pull you off and have a peek. Let's see what we see. Well, yeah, some, but not a lot. So obviously what has gone on there also... Look at me with these briefs, you know. Always a new set of briefs in the shop to wipe stuff down with. So what's going on is I think they use an undersized bolt. Went through there. It's pretty oval out. Let's, um, you know what, just for conversation's sake, let's see how that pin's going to fit through there. That, uh, that roll pin we were talking about. Let's see what we got. Yeah, see that? It's a bit wobbly. Not as bad as that bolt. But again, you know, that, um, that um, billet um, 
pulley is should be able to take up the slack here. What about wear on the crankshaft? Oh, I feel a bit of a shoulder there for sure. Not terrible. Nothing to be, I don't think, alarmed about. What do we got here? Grease? Just grease. Um, maybe some felt. I think they used to have felt under here on the bottom. The, um, be like your end bearing surface. Just wipe that kind of clean. See what we get here. You guys getting sick of looking at my old briefs? <laughs> Not as sick as I'm getting of using them. Man, I go through underwear really fast. I just rip through them. Tear them off. Okay. <sighs> yeah. You guys probably can't see it. Let me zoom you in a touch, huh? Okay. See that there? Bit of a shoulder here. If I was to get the caliper, which I will, because you know a lot of this is just for conversation, right? We want to see where things are at. Let me get some calipers and let's measure up the original size. Zoom you out of touch. Uh, measure the original size of the crank and and now measure the amount of wear on the crank. Let's check that. It's always good for conversation. <clears throat> out 1.1865 right 1.186 sorry you guys can't see that and the wear let's go let's go just in that little beside that, that little shoulder there 1.176 1 so yeah 1.176, 1.845, so you know, fair amount there, fair amount, but again, like I say, should not be a big problem, so I'm probably going to shut you guys off for a second here, I'm zoom you out a little bit more, huh? and um, I'm going to clean this area up a little bit, just degrease it a bit. Um, because I'm probably not going to come back to it again uh, later on after that guy's on there and then try to get underneath there and clean it up. And you guys don't want to see that clean up. It's uh, boring. I'm going to scrape away. I'm going to spray some brake clean and blah, blah, blah. Catch you in a bit. Hey, guys. Okay, we're back. We got it all tidied up here. You can see where they did some soldering down there. Tied everything together. Here's our new pulley. Here's our old pulley quite a bit of difference as far as uh, engineering really um, we've got this already lined up and marked with the taper the largest the largest uh, size hole there largest uh, inner diameter and we're going to I think we're going to um, just uh, line the end of this pulley here up with the end of the crankshaft and also you know with the with the hole obviously let's get that lined up See if we can't get that pin in there. Now it's got a start in there. We're going to drive that in. Stop short of damaging that pulley. Push it in the rest of the way. So there you go, you're about flush. I believe it needs to be driven past flush. And we'll compare that later on when we put our connector back on there, or Paul, I guess I think that's called, because that's going to engage with that pin. That should be pretty close though. I think I can feel it in there, about the same. Uh, so you can see it's already on there pretty good, better than it was, but it still has play back and forth. So now we're going to tighten up that grub screw, that hex key grub screw, where that split is down there. And that's going to pull that all together. 
nice and snug. And now that is solid. Absolutely solid. No movement there. We can check it now. Get our hand crank. Get our pin in there. There we go. Goes in, engages. We can check the alignment of that pin, see if it's driven in far enough. I can see it's not, so we need to go a little further. But, I mean, basically, that's that's it. That's all that renewed. The hand crank, the hand crank bushing, new spring. You can see here, new spring, new pulley. All working really slick, everything nice and solid. So there's no reason now really for that belt to go flying off. Like I say, you got the shoulders here. So that's the fix. Um, next time on Bag of Corner, I think we'll be addressing the commutator, um, rewiring the commutator, checking to see maybe we can change the commutator to, uh, I have another, a couple other ones here. I'll let you guys have a look at those next week. And uh, anyway, have a good weekend. And thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, catch you again soon. Good night.